a, a, a Giants podcast for Giants fans. By Giants fans. It's Sean Morash. On the sideline, into the end zone. Touchdown, Giants! From the offseason, through the wins and the losses, it's time to take one, one, one giant, giant step. step. What's going on, everyone? Bryce Gelman here, One Giant Step. Today, going to be discussing John Mara's comments, his once-a-year comments at the annual league meetings. Going to be talking about what he had to say about Saquon Barkley, how he was sick that Saquon Barkley left to go to the Eagles. And that's something that I think is much more important from his comments that we will get to right after. But let's let's start here. Let's start with what he had to say about Saquon Barkley. You may have seen it. You may not have. But essentially what he said is that he was sick over Saquon Barkley's decision to leave the Giants, but that he understood the decision and they had a conversation about him leaving. And I think John Mara's reaction represents the vast majority of the sane, rational Giants fan. The Giants fan that was definitely upset and emotional when it first happened, but as time went on, understood that this wasn't the right move for the Giants. It made no sense after a six-win season with lofty expectations that they obviously failed to meet, paying a running back $12 to $13 million guaranteed per year. We know that the Giants made the correct decision here. I don't know why it's such a big news story now. You got you got Shannon Sharp on ESPN talking about, about, about what John Mara had to say. You've got some people on WFAN saying some stuff about John Mara as well. I don't understand what's such a big uh, what what the, the, the big story is behind all this. It makes no sense to me. I, I just see an owner that obviously is going to he's gonna he's gonna toe the line. He's not gonna say anything too controversial. I think that this makes sense though. You know, he says that every single one of his grandchildren had Saquon Barkley jerseys. That makes sense. He's probably not lying about that. Saquon Barkley was the face of this franchise, whether you like it or not, for the last six years since he got drafted second overall in 2018. Saquon was a massive figure for the Giants. And yes, there was a lack of success during his tenure, but he was the face of the team. He did represent the city extremely well. He represented the franchise and Mara and Tish very well, uh, you know, to, to go with that. So, uh, and the, the the controversy also that you know that 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 John Mara uh, had a say in whether whether or not the Giants traded him mid season, I, I don't know. I, I think that at the end of the day, and this is this is the trade deadline was right after that Jets game, that brutal Jets game, uh, which is probably the worst game of football I've ever witnessed in my entire life. I'm sure plenty of you out there agree with that as well, but. The timing of this is important to note because at the, you know, I, I, I think the, the trade deadline was October 31st. The Giants decided, obviously, right around then to, to not trade Saquon Barkley. But I think what had happened after that Jets game was, wow, like this team, this franchise has a completely different outlook than it had going into this season. And of course, I mean, from, from, from the point that they were at with one or two wins, losing to the worst offense in the NFL and the Jets and losing to a quarterback in Zach Wilson in the fashion that they lost to the Jets in, I think was a huge slap in the face. The Giants at the end of the day, I think deep down in the moment, they loved that three game win streak that they went on right after that. And they, that's what they wanted at the end of the day, because I think it just, it, it would have been such a bad look for the Giants to win two to three games the season after winning a playoff game, trading away every single one of your winning assets, let's put it, to, to prepare for the future, when I don't think that that's what they necessarily had in mind for the season, even though the expectations had obviously changed after the Giants got off to that awful start that they got out to, you know, losing Andrew Thomas. At that point, Daniel Jones was, was in, he was out, and then right after he, he tore his ACL, uh, this was just a lost season, but a, a season in which I don't think anyone with the Giants was willing to admit was lost. So I think after that, after Daniel Jones gets hurt against the Raiders and they go on this three-game win streak, I think it, it partially legitimized who the Giants were, what they did the year before, who they had running the organization. And I think that that changed a lot, especially going into this offseason. And of course, that limited what they were able to do, and it limited their opportunities in terms of finding a franchise quarterback with one of those top three picks. But I think at the end of the day, this all ties in together. They made a collective decision to not trade Saquon Barkley because they understood 
that the, the scrutiny of the fans of the media would have been much different had they have finished in the bottom three, getting a top three pick versus what they actually did, which is win six games. And at the end of the day, does that help them? I say absolutely not. Now, in the moment, I was pissed, as I think a lot of other Giants fans were. Not not as many as, as I wished, but a, a lot of Giants fans were pissed with what they were doing. I thought that it was time to tank. I didn't see any upside. In, in, into winning games with a quarterback who probably wasn't going to be on your roster the next year. And and look what we have. And it's been reported that Tommy DeVito will probably not be returning to the Giants. He might be on the practice squad, but that's who he is at the end of the day. He's a practice squad quarterback. And that's where the Giants are right now. They decided, I think, collectively to win those games. And they decided collectively not to trade Saquon Barkley. And all the talk that Saquon could have been traded for a, a second or a third round pick. Are you, come on, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Saquon was realistically going for a fifth, sixth, or a seventh. Fifth at best. At best. With half a year left, everyone knows that he is going to want this exorbitant figure in in terms of his contract, in, in terms of guaranteed money, which he eventually got from the Eagles. And the Giants were not trading him to the Philadelphia Eagles, that's for sure. So if the Giants traded him to any team, they would have had a half a year of Saquon Barkley. No guarantee that they're going to win anything. That means there was no chance the Giants were getting anything above a fifth-round pick for him, and that's even wishful thinking at that. So let's move into the second part of, of what of what John Mara had to say, and the part that I think is much more important. We're past what happened with Saquon Barkley, and people are going to continue to talk about it because it was such a uh, a bad divorce, you could say. I, I don't know. It's over with. The Giants made the right decision. Let's move on, and moving on is what the Giants may have to do based off what John Mara had to say about his support in the front office to draft the quarterback. So first off, I mean, it's clear that Mara, based off everything that he said, I understand this could be just a face that he's putting on, but it's clear that Mara has still has full support in Shaden Dable to, to, you know, to rebound from what was just an extremely rough finish last year. Uh, but I don't think that that really impacted their standing in the mind of Mara and Tish, especially, as I said just a minute ago, because the Giants won games when they had their players come back healthy. They did. They won games, and they they saved face in what, uh, a much worse situation, even though, in my opinion, it would have been a better situation because they would have had a higher drive, draft pick, but I digress. So second, second off here, Mara says, basically, if they fall in love with the quarterback and believe that it's worth pick number six or moving up, I certainly would support that. That's just a year after paying a potential franchise quarterback, $40 million a year. That's very telling, guys. It, 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 it's very telling. And just last year, in the same, the same meeting, the annual meeting, annual meetings, John Maris speaks again once a year. Maris said there's no limit to how high Jones can climb in the NFL and that the Giants could climb with Daniel Jones and that they potentially win a Super Bowl with Daniel Jones as their quarterback. So to, to go from that just one year ago, so what we're hearing right now is obviously a drastic change. And it's understood after paying a guy $40 million a year, he does what he did last year. Again, injuries happen. Andrew Thomas is lost on one of the first plays of the season for the Giants after that first drive on that on the, the blocked kick. And your, your entire season is completely flipped upside down. I understand that. I don't think anyone's denying that. But Daniel Jones is a mobile quarterback coming off a bad, torn ACL, making $40 million a year. What do you think if you were in the position of John Mara as the owner of the franchise, paying a guy that I, I think a lot of people around the league doubt $40 million a year? I understand that it's not guaranteed that they could get Daniel Jones off the books if they don't like what they see going on in this, in this upcoming year. But either way, I don't think anyone at this point thinks that Daniel Jones could be the franchise quarterback that everyone thought he could have been last year when the Giants had no choice but to pay him the money that he, quite frankly, deserved. So right now, the Giants are in a spot where, as Mara said, if they fall in love with the quarterback, if they really like someone and they, they trade up for him, so be it. And we have to put our, this isn't a blind support. This isn't 
blind faith that we have as Giants fans. I think that this front office, besides a few moves, has proven to be more competent than we've seen since, let's say, Ernie Acorsi. Like, that's 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 where we're at with this Giants organization. I don't think any of us want to, to move on from this, from this front office and start over again. I, I just, I can't see that as being a positive because you're, getting run through more than, than any other, you know, at least at the front office, you're going to get like all these front offices uh, in, in such a short span of time, especially coming off of what we saw with Dave Gettleman, who you got to compare these two front offices. And then you see why John Mara still supports this front office. So I don't, all of this, I, I just don't understand the, the public, support and, and all and then not so public stuff too like the Dan Patrick report basically saying the Giants are absolutely going to try to trade up for a quarterback or draft a quarterback and sick that they are absolutely done with Daniel Jones it really doesn't make sense because then on the other hand you hear from John Mara that he still has a lot of confidence in Daniel Jones and then he says I think the Daniel we saw in 2022 is the real deal. Last year, he was hurt. A lot of his offensive linemen were hurt. and Things just did not go our way. But I've got all the confidence in the world, and hopefully he'll be ready to go by training camp. And yes, we'll expect him to be the starter in 2024. They are speaking so literally. I mean, like, this is – there could be no meaning to any of this. And I think we've all accepted that, and I think that a lot of us expect this to be the final year of Daniel Jones. But they are not just going right out and saying it, but – what John Mara had to say about the front office potentially going out and trading up for a quarterback or drafting one at six, it gives you all you need to know about what this organization thinks about Daniel Jones going forward. Again, right after paying the guy $40 plus million a year, they're saying, you know what? Why not? If we really like someone, we're going to draft them. If your organization had a quarterback, you wouldn't be saying that. And I don't think anyone's doubting that. And, and now in the, in the year 2024, the Giants have this, this decision to make, especially after everyone has said, and now John Mara is reiterating it as well, that this is a year in which the quarterback class is one of the best we have seen in a few years, probably going back to 2018. Is that where we're at right now? Where the Giants drafted Saquon Barkley, number two overall. I mean, there, there, there could be a, a few more sprinkled in there, but three quarterbacks going in the top three. That is what we're looking at right now. And the Giants are not a part of that. And the Giants clearly are kind of over Daniel Jones at this point. So it remains to be seen what they end up doing. I think John Mara is, again, the same with, with, with what he said about Saquon Barkley. He's towing the line. He is saying everything he can say he needs to say without actually full-on looking you in the face and saying it. But to insinuate, to go back to, to what to what I was saying before, to, to insinuate that John Mara is meddling in the daily operations of the New York Giants. Yes, if he wants to sit in on a few meetings, so be it. But to to, to insinuate that that John Mara is the one pulling the strings behind this operation, I think is an asinine statement to make. John Mara, say what you want about him. Say what you want about his inability to you know, to, to fire Dave Gettleman when everyone saw the writing on the wall has put his trust into this front office and he is sitting back and letting them make the moves that they deem necessary to make this team successful. And so be it. As a Knicks fan, I've had to deal with James Dolan for the majority of my life. And look what happened when he just took a step back and let his basketball people run basketball. John Mara is letting his football people run football. Rest assured, there could be a, a, a big positive in all of this. And again, no one wants to restart. No one wants to start over again. God forbid that they have to fire this front office. They bring in another one. Then maybe John Mara might be a little bit more hands-on. But right now, we have, I think, an ideal situation. Where if John Mara actually felt sick about Saquon Barkley leaving the Giants, he would have said, you know what, Joe Shane, screw you. We're matching this Eagles contract. We're bringing back Saquon Barkley. But he didn't because he understood that it wasn't the right move to make because that's what Joe Shane and Brian Dable were saying. So he put his trust into them with that decision. You could say what you want about, about the, the, the trade deadline situation. I think that it had to be a collective effort. I don't think that that 
Mara himself dictated the terms of what they were going to do with the trade deadline. I think the Giants came together and said, we need to win some games right now because we don't want the scrutiny of, of being one of the worst franchises and, and one of the biggest disappointments, even though they still were going off of the 2022 season. All right, that'll do it for today's one giant step on Bryce Gelman. Should be back next week with Sean. Now that April's coming up, draft season is upon us. And yes, we are going to be talking a lot about J.J. McCarthy. We should be doing almost a full episode on McCarthy, a few other prospects, guys that we want the Giants to draft. Stay tuned for all of that. So until next week, thank you for taking one giant step with me. I will see you all then. 